As one half of Abbott and Costello, Lou Costello's work has withstood the test of time. He helped create a legacy that his two living children have been striving to preserve and celebrate since his passing. Join us as we check in with his two daughters to see what it was really like living with this famous comic. Facts First presents Lou Costello's daughters speak out on his private life. The Costellos had four children. In 1934, Costello married his wife, Ann Butler. The couple welcomed the birth of their first child, a daughter, Patricia Costello. Their second child, a daughter named Carol, was born in 1936. In 1942, their third child, a son named Lou Costello Jr., arrived. Seven years later, Anne gave birth to her and Lou's fourth child, a daughter named Christine. Patricia Patty Costello Lou's eldest child, Patty, appeared on an episode of This Is Your Life in 1956. Besides that, she has been largely out of the spotlight. In 2010, she discovered that a local public school in the Southern California town of Manhattan Beach was producing a performance of her dad's Who's On First comedy routine. To honor her father's memory, Patty made the trip to the school to attend the performance. She told the periodical Easy Reader and Peninsula later that year that she couldn't think of anything that would have pleased her late father more than to know something like that was organized by a local school. Patty said Lou always loved children, and if he was alive, he would have been filled with joy knowing that young, aspiring performers were taking cues from his repertoire. Christine Chris Costello In the 1987 film Codename Zebra, Chris enjoyed a small role as Mrs. Noble. Over the years, she's also appeared in a handful of documentary films about her father and Bud Abbott's comedy team. Lou passed away in 1959 at age 52 from a massive heart attack. In a 2022 interview with Closer, Chris revealed how she met up with Bud right after her dad's tragic death. She told the outlet that she and Bud were sitting in the living room when an episode of Abbott and Costello came on TV. In that moment, Bud's eyes filled with tears. Chris said Bud looked at her and mournfully lamented he missed his buddy. Chris was only 11 when her father died. Nine months later, her mother, who was shattered by Lou's passing, also died. While she was just a child, Chris says she still has vivid memories of their time together. While her dad was famous, she recalls that whenever he walked into their family home every evening, he was just her dad. Most of the time, he was very serious, but when he would be with the kids, his funny side would come out. Chris maintains that her father and Bud Abbott remained lifelong friends until the end. It's widely known that the duo had their fair share of ups and downs. They were said to have frequently been on non-speaking terms, and it's also known that they rarely saw eye to eye when it came to salary issues. But at the end of the day, they always patched things up, compromised, and prioritized their friendship over everything else. Chris says even though they were together for 21 years and had their issues, it never meant they hated each other. In 1982, Chris published a book about her father's life called Lose on First. In her research preparing to write it, she interviewed over 100 people who knew her father. It was only then that she realized just how big of an impact Lou had on the world around him. She always knew he was a popular comic who at one point was one of the biggest box office draws in Hollywood. But after hearing firsthand testimony from the people who knew him, she came to discover he was a very heartfelt and giving man. For example, on one occasion during Christmas, Lou overheard a little girl crying because her mom couldn't afford a doll. Lou ended up telling the clerk to wrap the doll up and say to the girl that it was from Santa. Chris recalls that as generous as Lou could be, he also had fairly sticky fingers. Costello developed a reputation for walking off film sets with props. Chris says that her mom used to say their home was decorated in early Universal. For instance, two miniature battleship props used for in the Navy ended up in the Costello family pool. Evidently, Costello would use his light-fingered reputation as leverage to get what he wanted when dealing with studios. For example, in 1941, when the Andrews sisters began appearing in Abbott and Costello films, Lou became incensed when he learned they were only given a small army tent for a changing room. He ended up securing them a trailer by approaching Universal and telling them that if the Andrews sisters didn't get a trailer, something might happen to a clock prop that was set to be used in an upcoming scene. If anyone else had tried to pull a stunt like that, they would have gotten the can instantly. But Costello was not only fearless, he was also witty and incredibly charismatic. Lou Butch Costello Jr. There's nothing more heartbreaking for a parent than to lose a child. In 1943, just a year after he was born, Lou's son Butch drowned in the family swimming pool. 
Lou was in the middle of a rehearsal for a comedy radio show when he received the extremely disturbing news that his son had died. According to an LA Times article, Costello's wife had left Butch in a backyard playpen. She had only taken her eyes off her son for a few moments, but when she looked back, he was gone. Somehow he had managed to find his way into the family pool and fell in. Costello was left devastated following his son's sudden death. In his honor, Lou formed the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation, a recreation center that offers programs for youth in L.A. Bud Abbott received the news about Butch while he was watching an old recording of Who's on First. Later that evening, Costello chose to still appear alongside Abbott. At the performance, Abbott was the one who made the heart-wrenching announcement of Butch's death at the end of the show. Although Abbott and Costello continued to perform alongside each other for the next 14 years, Costello was deeply and insurmountably impacted by the loss of his son. Even so, Costello managed to press on and keep his head up. Carol Costello Carol was Lou's second oldest child. Like her father, she always had a taste for showbiz. In 1955, she made a couple of cameo appearances in his films, Abbott and Costello Meet the Mummy and Abbott and Costello Meet the Keystone Cops. Carol also worked as a talent coordinator on series like Card Sharks and Trivia Trap. Later in life, Carol married Dean Martin's son, Craig Martin. Sadly, in April 1987, Carol died at age 48 after suffering a massive stroke. Not only was this tragedy heartbreaking for Lou, it also deeply rattled the Martin family. Just eight days prior, Dean Martin's son, Dean Paul Martin, was killed in a plane crash. Abbott and Costello's kids are keeping their memories alive. Over the years, the surviving children of Lou Costello and Bud Abbott have collaborated to ensure their fathers are properly honored. In the late 80s, Chris Costello worked to have Abbott and Costello honored with a commemorative stamp. After campaigning for a couple of years, the USPS minted postal stamps featuring the comedy duo's likeness in August of 1991. Around that time, Bud Abbott Jr. and his sister Vicky teamed up with Patty Costello to produce a video for Warner Home Video that was called The Best of Abbott and Costello Live. The video featured a compilation of the duo's live appearances on TV. It featured a few bloopers and outtakes and was compiled from well-preserved family kinescope recordings shot from 1951 to 54. When the Costello and Abbott families got together, they formed a production company called Abbott and Costello Enterprises. They went on to produce a documentary about the iconic duo in an effort to clear the air of long-standing rumors that cast Bud and Lou in a negative light. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that Lou Costello's son Butch died before he was a year old and that his daughter Carol passed away at age 48? Let us know in the comments section below.